A lecture will now be given which summarizes the instructions for the Civil Conference and also the focus of their key words, signs, and penalties pertaining to the endowment which you have thus far received. You should try to remember and keep in mind all that you have heard and seen and may yet hear and see in the house. The purpose of this lecture is to assist you to remember that which has been taught you this day. You must keep in mind that you are under a solemn obligation never to speak outside of the temples of the Lord of the things you still hear in this sacred place. Brothers and sisters, the ordinance of the Jedi was as here at Minister, long withheld from the children of sin, pertains to the dispensation of the form of society and have been revealed to prepare the people for exaltation in the celestial kingdom where God and Christ dwell. The deep meaning of the eternal truth constituting the endowment has been set forth in brief instruction and by symbolic representation. If you give prayerful and earnest thought to the holy endowment, you will obtain the understanding and spirit of the work done in the temples of the Lord. The privilege of laboring here for the dead permits us to enter the temple frequently and to refresh our memory and to enlarge our understanding of the endowment. You were first washed and anointed. A garment was placed upon you, and a new name was given you. This name you should always remember, but you must never reveal it to any person except at the veil. You then entered this room. Here you heard voices of persons representing a council of the gods, Elohim, Jehovah, and Michael. Elohim said, See, yonder is matter unorganized. Go ye down and organize it into a world, like unto the other worlds that we have heretofore formed. As the creation of the earth progressed, you heard the commands and reports of the persons representing the gods. If we are faithful, we shall enter the celestial kingdom, and there hear and know the gods of heaven. They are perfect. We are imperfect. They are exalted. We may attain exaltation. Our spirit at one time lives with the God, but each of us is given the privilege of coming upon this earth to take upon himself a body so that the spirit might have a house in which to dwell. Michael, one of the council of the God, became the man Adam, to whom was given the woman Eve. However, as Adam, he did not remember his life and labors in the council. It is shown with us all. We come into the world with no memory of our previous existence. We then followed Adam and Eve into the garden, where Elohim provided that they might eat free of all the fruit of the garden except the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He forbade them to partake of this fruit, saying that in the day they did so, they should surely die. When Adam and Eve were left alone in the garden, Satan appeared and tempted them. Eve yielded to the temptation, but took the fruit and offered it to Adam. Adam had resisted the temptation of Satan, but when Eve offered him the forbidden fruit, he partook of it that they might continue together and perpetuate the human race. Adam and Eve now understood that it was Lucifer who had tempted them. They became self-conscious. Discovering their nakedness and hearing the voice of the Lord, they made aprons of fig leaves and hid themselves. They had learned that everything has its opposite, such as good and evil, light and darkness, pleasure and pain. The Lord again entered the garden. Adam and Eve confessed their disobedience. The Lord cursed Satan and cast him out of the garden of Eden. Adam and Eve also were driven out of the garden, and the Lord commanded, Let cherubim and a flaming sword be placed to guard the way of the tree of life, that Adam put forth his hand and partake of the fruit thereof and live forever in his sin. Before their departure, however, instructions were given them. Addressing Eve, the Lord said, Because thou hast hearkened to the voice of Satan and hast partaken of the forbidden fruit and given unto Adam, I will greatly notify thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shalt thou bring forth children. Nevertheless, thou mayest be preserved in childbearing. Thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee in righteousness. To Adam the Lord said, Because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife, and hast partaken of the forbidden fruit, the earth shall be cursed for thy sake, and for the producing fruits and flowers spontaneously 
It shall bring forth thorns, thistles, briars, and dark to sleep, to afflict and torment man. And by the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat thy bread all the days of thy life. For cross thou art, for call him unto dust, shalt thou return. Having been commanded, Jehovah provided Adam and Eve with coats of skin for recovery. The garment which was placed upon you after you had been washed and anointed represents the coat of skin or covering of Adam and Eve. They were also promised that further light and knowledge would be given them. The law of obedience was then taught Adam and Eve and accepted by them. Eve covenanted with Adam that sent forth she would obey the law of her husband and abide by his counsel in righteousness. And Adam covenanted with the Lord that he would obey the Lord and keep his commandments. You, likewise, covenanted to comply with the law of obedience. The law of sacrifice accompanying the law of obedience as contained in the Old and New Testaments of the Bible was next presented to Adam, and you were all placed under covenant to observe it. The law of obedience and sacrifice includes the promise of a Savior, the only begotten of the Father, who is full of grace and truth, and who by his sacrifice has become the Redeemer of mankind. All things should be done in the name of the Son. An angel of the Lord explained this to Adam, who was given the privilege of showing his obedience by offering sacrifices to the Lord in similitude of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Later, the people of Israel lived under this law, which continued in force until the death of Jesus Christ. The first token of the Aaronic priesthood, with its accompanying name, sign, and penalty, was given you. And you were told that the name of this token is your new name, or the new name of the dead, if officiating for the dead. The sacred nature of the tokens of the priesthood was carefully explained at this time. You were placed under solemn covenant, never to reveal these tokens with their accompanying names, signs, and penalties, even at the peril of your life. You were told that the execution of the penalties indicates different ways in which life may be taken. Then Adam and Eve were driven out of the garden into the celestial kingdom, or the lord and dreary world, the world in which we are now living. There Adam offered a prayer, saying, O God, hear the words of my mouth, repeating it three times. Satan entered, and claiming to be the god of this world, asked Adam what he desired. Adam replied that he was waiting for messengers from his father. Satan declared that a preacher would soon arrive, a man representing a sectarian minister, entered and preached doctrine which Adam did not accept. Peter, James, and John were sent down by the Lord to learn, without disclosing their identity, if the man Adam had been faithful to his covenant. They found that he had been faithful, and so reported. They were sent down again, this time in their true character as apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, to visit and to instruct Adam and his posterity in the celestial world. Before so teaching the people, they cast Satan out. The law of the gospel as contained in the Book of Mormon and the Bible was then given Adam and his posterity. He was placed under covenant to obey the law of the gospel and to avoid all right-mindedness, loud laughter, evil speaking of the Lord's anointed, and taking the name of the Lord in vain. The robe of the holy priesthood was placed upon your left shoulder, according to the order of the Aaronic priesthood. The second token of the Aaronic priesthood was given you, with its name, sign, and penalty. And you were informed that the name of this token is your first given name, or the first given name of the person for whom you are officiating. The robe of the holy priesthood was then changed to the right shoulder, as was done anciently when officiating in the ordinances of the Melchizedek priesthood. With the robe on the right shoulder, you have authority also, if called to the bishopric, to act in the Aaronic priesthood. You were then introduced with the robe of the holy priesthood on the right shoulder into the terrestrial kingdom. The law of chastity was there explained to you in plainness, and you are placed under covenant to obey this law. The first token of the Melchizedek priesthood, or sign of the male, with its accompanying name, sign, and penalty, was next given you. You were told that the name of the first token of the Melchizedek priesthood is the Son, meaning the Son of God. The Book of Doctrine and Covenants in connection with the Book of Mormon and the Bible was presented to you, and the law of consecration as contained in the Book of Doctrine and Covenants, was explained to you, and you received this law by covenant. 
The second token of the Melchizedek priesthood, the patriarch of this or sure sign of the nail, or the nail in the sure place, was given you, together with its sign. The name of this token will be given you at the veil. This token has reference to the crucifixion of the Savior. When he was placed upon the cross, the crucifier drove nails to the palms of his hands. Then fearing that the weight of his body would cause the nails to tear through the flesh of the hand, they drove nails through his wrist. Hence, in the palm is the sign of the nail, and in the wrist is the sure sign of the nail, or the nail in the sure place. You have now progressed so far in the endowment that you are ready to receive the name of the second token of the Melchizedek priesthood and to pass through the veil into the celestial kingdom. The sisters in this company who are to be married and sealed for time and eternity should be taken through the veil by their intended husband. Others will be taken through the veil by the regular guy workers. Brothers and sisters, you will have received this day the sacred ordinances of the endowment. The eternal plan of salvation for man as he journeys from his pre-existent state to his future high place in the celestial kingdom has been presented to you. You have covenanted this to obey all the laws of the gospel, including the laws of obedience, sacrifice, chastity, and consecration, which make possible an exaltation with the God. And you have received the first and second tokens of the Aaronic priesthood, and the first and second tokens of the Melchizedek priesthood, with the names, signs, and penalties of these tokens, except the name of the second token of the Melchizedek priesthood, which will be given you at the veil. All this is done for the glory, honor, and endowment of the children of Zion. Brothers and sisters, strive to comprehend the glorious things presented to you this day. No other people on earth have ever had this privilege, except that they have received the keys of the priesthood given in the endowment. These are what are termed the mysteries of godliness, that which will enable you to understand the expression of the Savior made just prior to his betrayal. This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, who thou hast sent. May God bless you all. Amen.